Hi, my name is Christoph Bausig and I'm a coach on the DP World Tour and I own Smart to Moose Force Blades since 2017. And here's Jean Paul Fernandez, the magic creator, the biomechanist of Smart to Move, who actually developed these fantastic force plates. And we are going to talk today about things we have observed, what all great players do. Absolutely, Christoph. Nice to be with you today and we're going to discover together the coaching part and the science part with the force plate, analyze forces and make it a better motion and try to make all of you get the best tips like the pros do. Okay guys, we have here Matthias Weiss. He just recently became professional and he's going to hit a shot for us here and we're going to analyze it and see how his data is. Matthias, on your go, please stand on the force plates. Just before hitting the ball, I will request to uh, rock your feet heel to heel. That's perfect, we've got the shot. Let's mm, have a look okay. together okay. what are the main points to uh, discover with the golf pros and what are the Action. secrets of performance. So Jean-Paul, we have his swing recorded now Absolutely. and there is a way to look at things. Can you just maybe run us through? Absolutely. There's a recipe to help you to look at the data. Uh, the first thing is always the timing. Okay, You just look when the peak of forces will create motion happening. And we know it's crucial that everything happens before impact. You, as a golf coach, uh, what are you looking for the timing and the different forces? Well, what I actually look the in the beginning is I look at the, the th uh, three graphs. Basically, the, the black line down here is the, the peak of lateral force. So I can, I can see it's actually, I think, it's a pretty good moment here. You want to actually peak around here in transition. Yeah. And it looks like this player does a really good job doing that. The second is the, the, like the golden line. Um, that's, um, that's the peak of the rotational force, yeah? So what we like to have is that it peaks around lead arm parallel, maybe just before lead arm parallel. Um, if it happens too late, you know that it's a little bit too late that it can actually do something for the shot, yeah? And Absolutely. so let's have a look at what how Matthias is doing. Just after this position, so slightly late. Slightly late, but uh, you probably would have to look at the if two or three more shots to late, really see if that's a that pattern or not, little yeah? Little but that it can but it's, do on this for the particular shot, he was a little so bit late, maybe, yeah? Just after this position. And the last, last one, one? yeah, the last one, yeah, the last one is the orange line, that's the uh, peak vertical force. Um, it, little, it depends a little bit on the type of the player. If you have a guy who's like a more a lateral golfer who moves side to side, he will peak around when the arm is about here in the golf swing. If it's a guy who's like more rotational, he will be more like, I would say, opposite of the belly button here. Yeah. And the golfers like who lose a lot of uh, vertical force, they will peak more the around when the shaft here, is around the golf here swing. If parallel. If it's a guy like more rotational, um, obviously we have more like screened him. I would say at least I didn't scream him. Mm, not yet. And but we, but like what we can say is a of, he's a uh, little bit maybe too late. He peaks um, after parallel, which would mean for him that his sequence is maybe a little bit late. Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. So it just means the potential of getting more speed, more consistency, more power is maybe there if we see this pattern happen more often. So we have to measure it a couple of times actually. Yeah? You're absolutely right. The thing is, when you've got a force which arrives too late, the motion will arrive too late. So that means probably the potential to create more club at speed can be done when the ball is gone, which is a shame yeah. because you just lose some uh, possibility to create more speed and more yeah. distance so make an easier game later on. Yeah, the sequence the is in the good order but effectively it's slightly late. Uh, so late. Yeah, I think that's interesting, Sean Paul. When you look at a sequence of great players on the tour, yeah, you basically see nearly every time a good timing. Absolutely. Well, I would say what I saw is when players don't have a good timing, their form was a little bit off as well. So um, that's always something I really look at first when I basically do a measurement? Uh, once we have observed the timing, the second thing is to observe the point of application. Where do you apply the forces below your feet? It's crucial because it can increase the risk of injury or optimize your motion and make it easier, okay? Everybody knows that if you push on the ball of the foot, you normally stand. Uh, if you push up, you normally stand on the ball of the foot. If you stand toward your heel, it's different. Inside, outside, everything will have an interaction with your muscle and what you can do. So having the good point of application is crucial to be sure that you're in good health and you can optimize the forces you generate. So how do we look at this, uh, Jean-Paul? So the main point and what is universal for everyone is when you are at the peak of vertical force. The lead foot is supposed to be on the ball of the foot, meaning the front 
Okay, you should be towards. So it's going to be right here. Absolutely. Right here. Here. Okay. okay. I mean, once again, if you generate vertical force, you normally try to push from this part of the foot. Okay. Yeah. Everybody can try to jump from the heel. It's more difficult. Yeah. So once again, what can you observe with uh, Matthias here? We have his backswing here. Yeah, actually here in this case here, you see around transition. You can see on his trail foot here, yeah, he has the pressure more towards his toes and more on the outside here. Actually, he's not loading on the ball of the foot and the lead You're foot. Right. Yeah. So this means, it doesn't mean that he cannot play great golf like this, but his potential could probably be better if he had a little better points of application. It's not optimal. Yeah. So that's something we can it definitely could be better. help him. Yeah. yeah. And if you go up to the peak of vertical force, which is where he applied the most of force uh, behind his lead foot, uh, it's in the same area. Once again, it's not toward the ball of the foot, so it's not the ideal stuff. Uh, it's toward the outside and slightly toward the, the, the heel. And definitely that's something we can optimize that will give him much more power and much more um, capacity to make an easy swing. Yeah, uh, you can see here, uh, like he's on the outside, more towards the heel. You, you just have to imagine like this, if you're on the outside on the heel and you want to jump, is this the best place to do it? Probably not. So um, does he have Will he have problems with his golf swing? Maybe not. No. Can he be better? Yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. Okay. And we know he's young as well, so it doesn't affect him too much. But more you train and more you're getting older, more this kind of stuff can injure yourself. <coughs> so it's very, very important to take care about this point and be sure that he's going to focus on that part of the foot and be sure he can play long time and long game. Yeah, I know, for example, Sean Paul, it has been a yeah, uh, opinion of many, many golf teachers or golfers that you have to put your weight in the heel immediately after just right at transition. I think that's something uh, which has to go. <laughs> this, this, this belief has to go. We have measured several swings from several golfers who are great ball strikers. <laughs> and basically, I think all great ball strikers load in the ball of the foot, right? We have measured over thousands of players. Thousands, okay, <laughs> thousands. So there's a lot. Um, it's a strong opinion. I mean, <laughs> once again, what you measure is sometimes different than what you feel or what you try to do. Okay, the intent can be different. Of course, many people try to just shift and finish around the hill. It yeah. doesn't mean that when you push, you are pushing under the hill at that time. It's probably the consequence of the way you push before. Force is precede motion. That's the beauty of force plate. Yeah. Okay, so if you can observe if you're doing the correct stuff, then you know that maybe you're going to finish toward the hill, which is the good position if you want a stable finish around the left tip. But, it's, but it's a consequence. But that's a consequence. It's not yeah. your intent. N and no maybe intent, to exactly. reach there, you can really push your hip to the front, uh, to the back, sorry, by standing on the ball of the foot and push it to the back. Yeah. And it's not an issue. That works. So yeah. never make the confusion between intent, feelings, and what really happened and what's the most efficient. That's why we, that's why we measure, yeah? Absolutely, don't guess, measure. <laughs> <laughs> there are the two main points, and we know that there's already uh, good capacities to improve with this player, so we're going to get a great session af uh, after with him. Uh, the first thing, when we've got that, uh, when the timing is correct and when the, the point of application is correct, <coughs> then we can start to pump up or maximize his forces, because if there's more forces, there's more motion potentially, so more speed. Okay? And I think everyone is happy to get more speed. As well At least as I, I, would be, I would be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, this is where we have to start to analyze the capacity of the player and knowing if it's better to generate lateral forces or rotational forces in the horizontal plane or vertical forces. It's like your right hander. It's like you've got left or right high dominant. It's like you prefer to turn to the right, turn to the left. You've got some uh, natural capacities and natural way to stand. And this one is very important. It's the axis you're pivoting. Are you pivoting more around the trail foot? So that time you need a lot of lateral force. Are you pivoting more around the middle? So you're going to be much more rotational in the horizontal. Or are you pivoting much more onto the lead leg? That's going to generate much more vertical force. It's natural. Your lower body action does that. So we've got to identify with this player which one is the strongest. And this graph already gives us uh, indication because we, we've got thresholds. And we're going to test him later on just to be sure what his main power. So what do you think is his um, From what we force? observe in the graph here, as you can see, uh, the threshold, the dotted line here, are just showing uh, the max lateral force for the first threshold, the max rotational force, and the uh, orange one threshold here. So the only one which is really above is the orange one. 
meaning that it could potentially be a vertical player. But we're going to test that. But, this, but sure. you can see he's very good in all three of them, right? He's, he's good at the three good, of them. Rotational and vertical. So that would be basically, if you see three good uh, forces, it would also be a sign maybe that he could be a long hitter? I mean, he's a professional player, so there's no secret. He's good. Okay. Well, I'm a professional player. I don't hit long. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no secret. He has to do something very good. <clears throat> okay, but let's imagine which one is the most efficient. And maybe there's one he's using. It's not necessary. Maybe there's one he's using. We'll see later on. By pushing too much laterally, that's maybe that's what changing the timing mm. or maybe gaining toward the outside of the foot. Yeah. That's something maybe we can change. So we're going to check that just to be sure yeah. uh, what would be the most efficient for this player. Mm -hmm. We want to make the motion more simple and he can control it and repeat it even under pressure, even in any kind of uh, pressure shot, which mm -hmm. is very important when you're on tour. We're going to test that with Matthias just to see. Yeah. Is he more lateral, rotational, or vertical with lower body? And yeah. we will, of course, assume timing and point of application are correct, just pump in the numbers, and we're going to see how the numbers on the trackman will change as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that would be interesting. The last thing um, is more technical, is the curve shape. It's uh, the shape, are they smooth or not smooth? Are you doing something natural, easy to repeat, or have you instability problem? Have you pain problem? So we can observe that. Uh, we can see the steepness of curve, which is your capacity to generate force in short or long time. That's the capacity of explosiveness. How long is a downswing in a golf, golf swing? How long time is it? 3.3 seconds? Oh, it's 0.25 seconds, I think. Yeah, so it's very Qu short. A quarter second, yeah. Yeah, so quarter second, it's very short. So explosiveness is a capacity we really look forward to get in the golf swings. Yeah. Okay, so the steepness of curve can tell you this. And we can calculate much more things like our much more for data science, like impulse and stuff like that, which is quantity of motion. We may not go too deep into that today, but you can go really deep and, and really screen the capacity of the players and compare before and after and what the coach will do how you can change the data and improve the player and the ball flag data. You know, Jean-Paul, yeah. I use force plates not only on my tour players, also with every, every player. But I think, I think that's something people don't understand. It's not a thing for only professionals. When you get an amateur golfer, or a, a, let's say a beginner, on force plates, you immediately can direct him in the right direction. Absolutely. You can save so much stress and so much time. So that, that's a one of the reasons uh, why I use them actually, because when I put go just normal recreational golfers on force plates, it explains for me as a coach exactly why he's doing something. When you can see he's coming crazy over the top of something, I actually can see in the data, oh, there's something wrong. And I always use this system, like this four step system. I always look first uh, timing of the forces, point of application, then magnitude. magnitude Maybe as a beginner, not that as important, and also the shape of the curve. But, yeah, of but you can see that that's interesting. The moment you start moving the first two, the timing and the, and the uh, for a point of application, he gets so much things just for free as a coach. Absolutely, you just put the right car on the right track. Exactly. Okay. You don't try to be what you're not. Yeah. So by looking at the data, that helps you very quickly. And that's for the uh, amateur players and for pros, of course, that helps you to track them time yeah. by time. And when there's something wrong, mm -hmm. you can compare. Yeah. So you can go yeah. quicker to the, to the solution and get back to what he's used to do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Jean-Paul, great stuff. But you guys do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because me and Jean-Paul, we're going to talk about more stuff like this and there are other great videos on the channel. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. See you soon, guys.